Now I request Dr. Pratap Kumar to kindly come and speak on this topic of complex coronary anatomy during primary PCI, how to deal and surmount. Dr. Pratap Kumar. Respected Chairperson, actually I just go to the complex anatomy with the aortic anomaly, anomaly coronary anatomy, abnormalogen, torture vessel, calcified vessel, heavily thrombotic lesion. I just go to the cases. I just give 17 cases in a short period. We have to, problem with the guide catheter, guide wire, heavy thrombus. Thrombus not responded to conventional treatment. Two lesions in the culpable vessel, bifurcation lesions, complex anatomy, LMCA, post cabbage, post cabbage, not whether to stent or not to stent, post C2 intervention, MI, post PCI, iatrogenic and pseudo complex lesion anatomy deceived. This is a person who is chest pain, 11 p.m., acute inferior MI, advised primary PCI. The lesion is basically in the totally occluded vessel. Just put a JR catheter. I could cannulate, but when I just wanted to put a stent, I was not able. Everything coming out, just switch the catheter to amplats. Some of the time, everything coming out and amplats saving the patients. Second is a guide wire issue. Lesion at bifurcation. This is lesion. We really don't know where the exact lesion is. But you can see it is an ankylated vessel. The vessel is looking in a different angle. Thrombus aspirated. You can see the vessel is different angle, which is actually can be deceived by the normal wire. The third case actually a heavy thrombus in one side and diffuse lesion on the distal side. Thrombus lot aspirated. After aspiration, again the same situation. But I just put a catheter deep inside, no use. Direct stending ended this result. Other one is actually a patient came with a CVHS pain, acute MI, lies with TPA, no ST resolution, pain purse is taken for angiogram, multiple thrombus aspiration, thrombus everywhere, abseximab continue for 24 hours, next day same situation, pain subsided, but lesion is like this. Put one wire, two wires, I am not reaching anywhere, just thrombus aspiration and two M guard stent finish the procedure. This is actually the two lesions in the same vessel when you have an angiogram like this, one lesion up, one lesion down. This will be the situation, you will end in two stents rather than one stent. Other one is a bifurcation lesion, angiogram like this, two important vessel in acute MI, whether will you put one stent or two stent, ended with single stent is always better. A bifurcation lesion, sometimes we will be in trouble. Two lesions at the junction, you can see two vessels, which ones to stent. You have to take the best vessel to stent, thrombus aspiration, find out the way, and the big vessel to be stented. This is actually a history in our phrase, complex lesion, multiple lesion, cardiogenic shock, which vessel? Thrombus aspiration, single stent, and the later on the other vessels to be treated. A 90-year-old man, acute anterior MI, pain three hours. You can see that LMC, osteoproximal disease, single stent, This one is a cardiogenic shock with LMC, a diabetic patient, CVHS pain, advocate. <coughs> You'll be landing with double stent or not. I just finished with one stent and finished the procedure. This one is a post-cabbage intervention, acute MI, nothing seen down whether to go ahead. Thrombus aspiration will not reveal anything. You just do a thrombus aspiration. We'll get land up in TME2 flow, not in TME3. But this situation is different. You have a significant lesion down. You can put a device down. You can actually, DPD you can take, put a stent, and finish the procedure. Very good result. Sometimes we will be finishing with acute MI, politician, advocate, came within two hours. Lesion is like this.
thrombus aspiration. You can see that totally dissected vessel down, what to do down, whether to stent or not. This will be stenting or not to stent. Ended in one stent, one, another stent. Result is like this. A successful C2 intervention angiogram done four years back, advised cabbage, not willing. Now again with a progressive angina. By a lot of struggle, opened the vessel, putting a stent, and in the same next day morning, patient came with acute MI. There was a calcium speck was there, or reopened, and then put a stent again. Post PCI chest pain, chest pain one hour, anterior MI by electrocardiogram, standing done by me, myself, one month back for this lesion, simple lesion, angioplasty was done. Standing done, easy, but after one week, patient came with chest pain. This was a situation that catheter tip was inside. You can see the catheter tip. I just put a balloon inflation. Subsequently, I put a balloon, two millimeter balloon, inflated, distal to the catheter tip, just removed. You can see that actually the catheter tip is taken out. Catheter tip is taken out. Then it was simple, just with the post dilatation, send the patient away. This one was actually referred as a case of multiple lesions with a CTO, total occluded LAD, but you can see only a minimal lesion in the LAD after abseximab for 24 hours, putting a single stent. It was a pseudo-complex lesion referred as multiple lesions. This is anatomy deceived, young lady, diabetic, ST elevation MI. You can see that right femoral artery occluded, left femoral artery lesion, right supply when occluded, difficult cannulation, left radial. You are not able to cannulate. This is actually the catheter looking like this. Balloon inflation, taken one and a half hours in the cath lab. At the end, putting a stent down. You will be feeling that you are okay. Totally occluded, right supply vein, occluded right common iliac, deceased left common iliac, and at the end, doing a procedure after one hour of suffering. These are all situations which come across in cath lab. These are the complex anatomy which came across me. I just presented 17 cases in short period. I was rushing through because the time is short. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pratap. Please can join us on the stage. Uh, one question to Dr. Dr. Alexander. Which is the most uh, popular thrombolytic agent that you could uh, get across to all the socioeconomic groups in your... Actually, about 90% uh, of these patients had streptokinase. So it's only in the hub hospitals when occasionally thrombolytics were used was uh, tenecteplase or retiplase used. But all the pharmacoinvasive is uh, using streptokinase. And the period, the average time is 12 hours after the streptokinase that we've intervened in the, in the pharmacoinvasive study. And let's say 90, 95% of those who are transradial. Uh, very rarely do we use uh, transfemoral. Yeah, again, Dr. Thomas, Thomas when uh, you uh, use both bare metal stents and drug eluting stents, what's the difference in uh, outcome over a period of follow-up 30 days and one year between bare metal stents and drug I mean, if, you, if, you, if you look at the data, actually, I mean, uh, we don't, we have, this is just the project that's just started, but okay. we will have this data. But uh, if you look at across, uh, I mean, many of these data that we have, the it's about 10% restenosis with bare metal and about 3 or 4% with uh, like uh, drug no, and you're, you don't No, you no, don't we don't have the follow-up. We don't, I mean, short term, short -term. no, 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 no difference in the, in, in acute stent thrombosis. And what's the, what's the 30 day mortality? Well, this is the first 100, okay. it's only seven sure, weeks yes, since yes. we have started this implementation 
uh, phase. Yeah, but it's a very impressive initiative, I think, uh, one of its kind in the developing world, that Tamil Nadu STEMI project, we must give them a big hand for taking this initiative.